knowing what today is in the, in the calendar and the events of things, you know, today is a time of uh, where you start a cycle of a seven of consolation. So what, a, what, a, what an appropriate word. What an appropriate word that, that Anaya shared with us in, in regarding the times and the seasons that we're in. Um, what is the seven of consolation? I don't, like I said, I don't want to keep you guys long. I'm going to go through this pretty quick, but uh, I wanted to make sure that this kind of got out to, to help us as we focus into what's ahead. We know in the, in the realm of the Moedim, the spring Moedim talk about redemption. We're talking about Yeshua when he came. We're talking about our Messiah when he came, what he came to do, right? I mean, Passover, that's about redemption. It's about redeeming the people, right? And so the people were redeemed, then you have a time of first fruits. Again, seeing that Yeshua is our first fruit. After he redeems us, he is the first fruit. He, that's the reason why he does that, right? Then going into the time of uh, unleavened bread, teaching us his ways, teaching us how to walk with him in a, in a life without defilement. And then going, looking forward and ahead to uh, Shavuot, you know, Pentecost, down to Shavuot, a time where the people received the word of Yahweh by his spirit to, to, to be empowered with the word to go forward in life. And then you have the summer. What happens during the summer? What Moedim are during the summer? What's going on in the summer? It's hot. <laughs> there aren't any Moedim in the summer, and this is a time of testing, a time of going in. Uh, this is the season of, of, uh, of, of, are you going to walk in what you've been given? Yahweh gave you. He redeemed you. He pulled you out of where you were, gave you his word, equipped you with his presence. Are you going to walk in it? Are you going to do it? That's the season we're in. And then looking forward into the fall Moedim, like when he comes back, when he returns, what's, what's going on? What does this talk about? Then Yom Teruah talks about uh, prepare the way. The king is coming. Are you going to be ready to meet with him? Prepare the way. Yom Kippur, it's about atonement, about judgment. When the king comes, he's looking, have you been atoned for? Have you received this from him? And then after atonement is a time of Sukkot, where we are learning to dwell with him. And the idea is forever. The idea is a, a, a new everything with him. But the season we're in now is the summer. We have a lot of tests during the summer, a lot of things going on in the summer. Um, the ninth of Av is, is something that has testified throughout history. It hasn't been a good day for the people of Israel. Both temples were destroyed on that day. It's, it's uh, uh, also the day when the, the report of the spies came in, remember the negative report that were brought in and all the people of Israel lost faith in Yahweh. This is what was going on in that time. So we have portions of scripture right now that point us in between this time of, between the ninth of Av and going into Yom Teruah that is about comfort and consolation. It is telling us Yahweh has not forgotten you. Though it seems you're in a time of testing, Though it seems it's hot, though, uh, though life is getting difficult, Yahweh has not forgotten you. He is with you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Like I said, how appropriate was, was the word that was shared earlier, right? So really quick, I want to get into these, and I, am gonna, I am promise you I'm not going to keep you long. Okay, so the seven of consolation, and uh, what are these? Seven weeks from the time of the ninth of Om of till Yom Teruah, seven selections from Isaiah are read. Each one has a message of hope, consolation, and closeness to Yahweh. In these, Israel is reassured that its sins will ultimately be forgiven, exile will end, and the entire nation will be returned to the land. We're waiting for that ultimate redemption of all things at the end of time, right? So what happens? How does this start? Well, the seven selections on, on the first week is read from Isaiah 40. And it reads, comfort, comfort my people, says your Elohim. In the Hebrew, it's nachamu, nachamu ami. This Shabbat is commonly known as Shabbat nachamu, the Shabbat of comfort and consolation. No coincidence, is there? This is a Shabbat of comfort and consolation. Have you felt this way? This is, this is for you. This is for you. This is a time of comfort and consolation. If you want a list of the seven readings, here they are. You could use your phone, take a picture. If you're going to watch online, you could take a screenshot or whatever. These are the seven readings uh, from Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 26, from Isaiah 49, verses 14 to 51, 3, Isaiah 54, 11 to 55, 
55.5 and uh, Isaiah 51.12 to 52.12, Isaiah 54.10, or sorry, 54 verses 1 through 10, and uh, Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 22, and Isaiah 61 verses 10 to chapter 63 verse 9. These are the readings. So, not going down to read all of them, but if you take a look at these, it does really say something pretty interesting here, okay? So the first of the series of seven, Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 26, this selection it, it, it talks from Isaiah. It uh, begins with an exhortation to the prophets. What were the prophets commanded to do? To comfort, console my people. That's what the prophets were supposed to do. Comfort, comfort my people. They were to announce to Jerusalem that the period of exile has been fulfilled and their sins have been forgiven. So it's a time of, of speaking to return. Isaiah's prophecy describes how uh, some of the miraculous events that will unfold with the onset of the Messianic era, like the return of the exiles to Jerusalem, the revelation of God's glory, and the rewards of retribution that will be, then be meted out. We're talking about the return of the Messiah. We're talking about judgment. And we're talking about how in the midst of all that, Yahweh is with his people. The prophet then goes on to bring comfort to the people and he describes God's power and might and reassures them of his care for his people. Essentially, God is saying, I know you're going through a lot. I haven't forgotten you. Right? Okay. Second, Isaiah 49, verses 49, 14 uh, to 51, 3. The exiled expressed their concern. Yahweh's abandoned them. See that? What's happening here? As you read through these, it kind of reads like a conversation. Yahweh has said, and the people respond. Yahweh has said, and the people respond. Right? So Yahweh is saying, comfort, comfort my people. And then in this portion of Scripture, the people are saying, we feel you've abandoned us. You ever felt that way? Now, God said he promised you never would, but have you ever felt that way? So God reassures them this is not so. He reassures them. He compares his love and his mercy for his people to that as a mother for her children. The prophet Isaiah then describes the ingathering of the exiles, how he loves them and he will gather and bring them all back in. And the people's complaint about being abandoned is addressed. Yahweh reminds them of their rebellious behavior that brought about the exile and suffering. He says, though I love them, you know, remember, this is the time that was given because of idolatry, because of rebellion, because of these things, you were exiled, but I have, have not left you. I will return you and bring you back. So he concludes with encouraging words, reminding us of what has happened, to our ancestors and to all those that have come before, Abraham and Sarah, all that. But just as they were blessed with the child when they had given up hope, Yahweh says he will send us the Messiah. See, we have hope. See? Okay. So, third, Isaiah 54, 11 to 55, 5, Yahweh addresses the afflicted and storm-tossed. Again, you ever felt that way? You know, he talks about the afflicted and storm-tossed to Jerusalem who has not been comforted. You ever been with somebody who just can't be consoled? So here, the afflicted and storm-tossed Jerusalem just can't be comforted. He assures that they will be restored to their full glory, as Yahweh had promised. And then the foundation walls and the ground of Jerusalem will be laid with precious stones. And her children will be disciples of Yahweh and will enjoy abundant peace. Any weapon engineered against her will fail. And then those who are thirsty should study the quenching words of the Torah. He promises the nation our everlasting covenant to be similar to the made with King David. There's also an allusion to the Messiah, like David's descendant, the Messiah, Yeshua, that would come. And he would be gathering in all the nations of the world. Fourth, Isaiah 51, 12 to 52, 12. The Haftarahs of the two past weeks open with Israel's complaint that they have been abandoned, okay? Which, by the way, if I, if I didn't mention this, I don't remember. These are the Haftarahs that coincide with the Torah portions for the seven-week time period, okay? So uh, Israel is, uh, is not content with the consolation offered by the prophets. <laughs> you ever been there? It's going to be okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> huh? So the people are not satisfied with the prophet saying, God's going to work it out. And, and so again, uh, he says, I indeed will comfort you. So the time arrived for the suffering to end. The time has come for Israel's oppressors to drink the cup of suffering. 
which they had forced Israel to drink. Time to repay. It says, awake and awake and put on your strength, O Zion. Put on the garments of beauty. Jerusalem, the holy city, will no longer be, for the, will the uncircumcised and the unclean continue to enter? You shake yourselves from the dust, arise and sit down O Jerusalem. Free yourself of the bands of the note, captive daughter of Zion. It's, a, it's talking about those who oppressed you. Don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm dealing with it. Okay. Fifth. Isaiah 54, 1 to 10 says, forsaken Jerusalem is likened to a barren woman devoid of children. It says, rejoice, for the time will soon come when the people will return. Yahweh drawing all people from all world, all nations back home. You know, no matter when this happens or how this happens in the meantime now, ultimately there's a place called the New Jerusalem. <laughs> right? So it says, rejoice, for this time will come. The prophet assures the people that Yahweh has not forsaken them, although momentarily he hid his countenance from them, but he will gather the exiles and he will do so in great mercy. The mountains may move, the hills might collapse, but my kindness shall not depart from you, or neither shall my covenant of my peace collapse. So Yahweh addressing major promises. Sixth, Isaiah speaks of what will unfold during the redemption, beginning with the resurrection of the dead. Unfolding during the redemption of the people, resurrection of the dead is a big part of that. And guys, we know we have these promises. So beginning with the resurrection of the dead and the end gathering of the exiles, continuing with the joy and the abundance that the people will then experience. Israel will no longer be despised and derided. There will no longer be violence or mourning and Yahweh will shine his everlasting light on his people. That's a time of great joy. That's the time that we're looking at. And seventh, Isaiah 61, 10 to 63, 9. Isaiah describes the great joy that people will experience with the final redemption, comparing it to the joy of a newly married couple. You ever watch a newly married couple, the great joy they have, and you're like, oh. <laughs> he says Israel will be like the great joy, like a newly married couple. And he then declares his refusal to passively await the redemption. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be still until her righteousness emerges like a shining light. And Isaiah concludes with this. In all Israel's affliction, he too is afflicted, and the angel of his presence redeemed them. Like a loving father who shares the pain of his child, Yahweh shares the pain of his people and awaits the redemption along with them. So what are we looking at here? The seven Parsha reading, this is what we have here, and the Parsha that go along with them. We have Ve'et Hanan, which is and I pleaded. Re'e, or Ekev, which is on the heel of. Re'e, which is to see or to behold. Shoftim, Parsha for judges. Kitetse is when you go out. Kitavo is when you enter in. And Nitzavim, you are standing. If you take this, you can kind of draw a little bit of a story with that. For the Parsha that are there. It says, and I pleaded, and Vayet Hanan is for Yahweh to show us his grace and his mercy. Vayet Hanan, and he gives his mercy, right? So, in his grace and his mercy, and on the heel of his grace and mercy, because of his grace and his mercy, we will see or we behold, then the judges is when judgment comes, right? Righteous judgment, proper good judgment. So no matter what we're doing, as we go out and as we come in and in our life, wherever we are, we will stand with Yahweh in the midst of it all. No matter what's happening, we will be with him and he will stand with us. So we look through these readings. If you take these and you take the portions that are given in there, like I said, it kind of reads like a little story going back and forth. Look. These are, these are the readings. Comfort, comfort my people, says your Elohim. But Zion said, Yahweh has forsaken me, and my Adonai has forgotten me. Afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I am laying your stones with fair colors and have founded you with sapphires. There you go. I am he comforting you. Who are you that you should fear from man? He shall die. From the son of man, he is given his grass. You see how this is kind of like a conversation that is going back and forth. Sing out, barren one who never bore. Break out the song and shout, you've never travailed. For the sons of the, of the desolate one are more than the sons of the married woman, says Yahweh. And arise and shine. For your light has come, and the glory of Yahweh has risen on you. Rejoicing, 
I will rejoice in Yahweh. See how this all kind of comes together. It's really like many of the Psalms, guys. You ever read through the Psalms where David is just pouring his heart out and saying, I don't understand. I'm going through these things and what's happening. And by the end of the Psalm, it says, but God. That's it. No matter what you're going through, it doesn't, be honest with Yahweh. Just, just tell him how you feel. But just at the end of it, acknowledge, come back to, I will trust him though. No matter what, I will trust him. And so this is kind of the reassurance that all this is going on. He says, so rejoicing, I will rejoice in Yahweh. My soul shall exalt in my Elohim, for he clothed me in the garments of Yeshua. That's what it says. For he clothed me in the garments of Yeshua. He put on me the robe of righteousness, even as a bridegroom adorned as a priest in his fancy attire and as a bride wears her wedding dress. That's where we are. So rejoicing. I will rejoice. No matter what we've been through, no matter what has happened, I will rejoice because Yahweh has clothed me in his salvation and brought me into his presence. So, coming around to close this out with this. Revelation 21, 2 through 5. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow or crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things, what? New. And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. Revelation 21, 9 says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven less plagues. And he talked to me, saying, Come, and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Yahweh has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. And he has called you and redeemed you out and to be his own. Lastly, Revelation twenty two seventeen 17 says, And the spirit and bride say, Come. And let him that hears say, come. Let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. No matter what happens, Yahweh is still Yahweh. No matter what is going on, let us surrender to him. Let us magnify him. Let us use whatever is happening in this life for his glory to help build his kingdom in our lives. And let's... Uh, be the people he's called us to be. He's called you to overcome the ways of the world, not to, I mean, to overcome something, you still have to go through it. He's called us to overcome the world, and he says you can do it because of who he is, because of what he's called you to. All we got to do is trust him, have faith, stand strong. You will overcome because Yahweh has made a way. Amen? All right, let's all stand.